Good morning, everyone. We are leaving the Spring Hill Suites near Minneapolis Airport. We're going to stop at the mall first to get lunch because it's cheaper to get lunch at the mall than it is at the airport. Hello, welcome to the Hello Travels YouTube channel. Today we are here, I don't know why I'm doing this voice, but we are here at the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport where I, Ben, will be filming and being your tour guide today. You may have seen this place before or not. And that may be why you're watching why, why you're watching this video. What? Someone just honked at us for no specific reason. Is there a weirdo going to this? As we can see, we are going to the area where the rental car return is, but we are not going to the rental. Oh, there it is, the parking. That's what we want. This way is. And we want to go to the right because the left is for rental parking or rental car returns. Mom has the email pulled up for the ticket. <gasps> oh. oh no. Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, guess we're not going in there. Well, guess we're not going in there. <laughs> it's full? Uh, but I have a reservation. What do you mean it's full? Full, 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 full. Well, I guess everyone's going here. Okay, well, we wanted to show you how to park into the blue ramp today, which I prepaid for my parking. Show me, buddy. But, oh man, I don't want to be this far away when we have all this luggage. Yeah, it does. There we go. No. Don't go in reverse. Okay, show me a second. All right, this is the silver ramp, which I showed you in my last video, and which I very definitely do not want to be parking at today. I wanted to park in my regular spot in the blue ramp, and I wanted to show you how to park in the blue ramp for long-term parking. I prepaid for parking in the blue ramp, and it's showing that all the ramps are full. Every single ramp, every short term and long term ramp is full. And so uh, they're making us go into the silver ramp, which is really far away and is going to be a pain with all of our luggage. We like to park in a specific spot in the blue ramp because when we travel, because we have a lot of luggage. So this is definitely not ideal and I am not, not ideal for everyone. Yeah, and I'm not happy about this. And I'm a little... I wonder if maybe there's snow everywhere. Yeah, there, there's been a big blizzard the last few days, and I'm wondering if they're having to clear snow. That's a very good thought and possibility. Um, it was blowing a lot and stuff. So I've showed you this before, last video where I came to pick up Megan from when she took the bus from um, school. But I'm worried about this is not a very big ramp at all. And this is where all the rental cars are. And I'm worried that this is going to fill up really fast, too. Hello, everyone. Okay, we're picking up from where Ben left off with his fabulous narration. Um, we've had kind of a challenging airport experience today. First of all, the parking thing really threw me off. And it was obviously throwing a lot of people off because a lot of people were very confused. Nobody usually parks in the silver ramp like I explained in my previous video. Nobody knew where to go. It was a mess. I'm upset because I pay a lot of money. I paid $160 weeks ago for my prepaid parking space yeah. in long-term parking, and that whole thing was closed. The more we think about it though, we're finding it very hard to believe that the parking ramp is actually full because for all the people that would have prepaid for their parking like me, we're supposed to be reserved a spot. I think something's wrong. Yeah, I think something's wrong too. We strongly suspect there's either some kind of Mechanical, mechanical problem throughout the entire airport. Yeah, or um, because of the weather, that there might be a snow or ice issue, issue in the yeah. ramp. Like maybe they have to plow it, and they don't want any new cars coming in there right now or something. But 
That seems really, I've never seen that. I've never seen the ramp closed, closed like that. So that was very weird. So not right. real thrilled and that threw me off right away. And then we were all in a kerfluffle trying to figure out what we were doing. And that does take longer to get from the silver ramp. It took a long time to get over here. And that's gonna, didn't you say you saw a guy running? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's gonna take people a long time to get over here if they were expecting to park in blue or red and then they had to, <laughs> yeah, whoopsie. Okay, second problem we had was when we got to the kiosks, the Delta kiosks, I had already prepaid for our checked bags when I checked us in online, but the kiosk was not recognizing that I had already prepaid for the bags. First, we tried it with Ben's app because he could pull up both, both our boarding passes. Then we tried with my app, I tried like four or five different kiosks. None of them were recognizing that I had already prepaid for my bags and it was prompting me to like pay for them again and I wasn't gonna do that. In the meantime, okay, I should tell you about this flight. Ben and I paid, I paid for this flight and it was 700 something for the two of us. So like around the 350 to four, it was, it was 300 something between 350 and 400 for each of our, <laughs> our two tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Megan used miles well, to again. check my bag. No, you used miles to get the ticket on okay, this flight. Yes, to yeah. get my ticket. Okay, so you were able to check your bag, right? I was able to check my bag and I paid for it with yep. my card. She checked in online last night too. Yeah. But I, I said you pay my bag. Right, which I guess you could have because oh no, but then you would have had to wait in the stupid line like we did. Yeah. So Megan paid for her bag with her card and then she went ahead and went to the drop off. Dropped off her suitcase. Oh, how much was your how how much did your suitcase buy? Thirty five pounds. Yep, Megan's was the heaviest today. Megan's was 35, mine was 32, and Ben's was 27. 27. So, pretty light suitcases this time around for us. Finally find a Delta rep. There was no Delta person anywhere. Usually around the kiosks, there's Delta people to help you, and there was nobody. So finally we walk way down to the other end and there's a Delta guy. And he's like, oh yeah, we're having some technical problems today. And I said a little tersely, could you put up a sign? <laughs> you know, because you know, would it be so much to just put up a sign? Because well, they're gonna have to design, make, print the sign, find yeah. a place to put it in. I guess, but then he needs to be paying better attention. He was cleaning the screens. Is that really? I don't even think his job was to tend the kiosk. Yeah, so whatever. Well, there's usually it. somebody there. Maybe. There wasn't today. He had a Delta uniform on. Anyway, I just think it was they need to be paying closer attention to the fact that people were having trouble because then I had to go seek him out and ask what to do because it wouldn't, it wasn't working. So then we had to go wait in a big long line. It did not, however, take much longer for us to wait in the line and get our baggage stickers than it did for Megan to drop hers off because she was just, I don't know, not very far ahead of us in the TSA line. Our TSA guy was very efficient. We then did have to walk the entire length of the airport because we went into South, T South Security? Did we go into South Security? I don't know. We went into the security that we usually go in and our gate today is D6, which is pretty much really far from where we went through security. Long way. Here's what D concourse looks like right now? It's actually, this one's looked like this for quite a while. They've been, I think we've... They've been working on this for, yeah. Actually, I think I'm crazy now. It's kind of like being in a space station. So there's all this exposed wiring and pipes and there's a bunch of like walls blocking stuff off down there and everything. The Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport is currently undergoing a massive renovation project that's going to take several years and they're doing one concourse at a time and presently they appear to be doing D. <laughs> so 
that's where we are, and this is apparently going to be all spiffed up or something. This is a very small concourse. Is it just this? Is it just six gates? Is that all it is? I think it's just six gates. But anyway, here's my last complaint about why um, I'm so hot. Aren't you hot? Yeah. And I'm never hot. No, she's not. I she's usually cool freezing. <laughs> I'm so hot right now. And I wore these nice, thick, new pants today, which was a mistake because I'm so hot. It's really cold outside today. What is it, like six degrees? It's not six degrees. It's, it's 27. 27. But this morning when I got up, it was like 16 and felt like... It is very cold outside, though. Yeah. Like, even the few couple minutes we were outside, like, in the parking garage getting our suitcases out of the car, I was, like, shaking so bad. It was so cold. But I need an in-between. Yeah. Where's the in-between? Because here's the thing. Outside is cold. The airplane is cold. But the airport is always so hot. And, I mean, to its credit, it has a lot of glass. It's nice to have all these windows and stuff, but it lets a lot of sun in and it does get very, very hot in here. And so I'm just really hot and uncomfortable right now. And so that makes for not a very much pleasant airport experience. I think we're boarding, what time is it? 1.30. We're boarding in 30 minutes. So that's what's happening so far. If I didn't mention it, we're flying to Washington DC. We're flying to Reagan. <laughs> Reagan is a nice airport to fly to because you can see the monuments as you're coming in on the approach to Washington, D.C. I far prefer Reagan National Airport over Dulles International Airport. One little thing I want to add, yesterday was the tragic collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. If you haven't been following that story that just happened yesterday, it was a shipping container ship that had just left Baltimore and it lost power. And I read that they said that if the ship loses power, there's nothing they can do. They dropped the anchor trying to slow it down. They did put out a May Day um, to warn people, which did stop traffic on the bridge, thankfully. But seven, eight people, construction workers, it was in the middle of the night, it was like 1.30 in the morning. Seven people missing. No, six people are missing, presumed dead. They, they, found, they found two. And they're both all right. But the other six that are presumed have died. The water was very, very cold. But if you saw the video, CNN had good video. That thing went down like a pile of matchsticks. It collapsed in just seconds. It was terrifying. And you guys wonder why I'm scared to cross bridges like that. I don't think anybody wonders. Only he wonders. Yeah, he doesn't understand why I'm scared to cross bridges. I think it's rational. You fall, you fall, you don't want to say. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Okay, so we're, we're kind of wondering. Baltimore is very close to Washington, D.C. If we might, I mean, see, the see, it, the, see it from the plane. Um, the planes are just going one after the other on this runway. Yeah. I don't know what, like, geographically the flight route would be like coming in there. It's not really close to, you know where we're landing, but maybe. If, if we do, I'll try to get some footage. definitely cracking down on carry-on bags. They just made an announcement um, about how you really only get one carry-on. She also announced earlier that it was a full flight as usual and was really pushing for people to check their roller bags. We don't have any roller bags. We have a backpack each, but Megan and I each also have our purse. And she just made, the gate agent just made an announcement that purses must be consolidated inside our other Back, you know, basically inside our backpacks. So, I mean, we would have that stuff on the floor in front of our seats anyway, but I'm probably gonna have to take my sweater out of my backpack to get my purse in there and tie my sweater around my waist. But um, there's also a security guy who just walked through the gate area and 
he's hanging around right by our gate like he's looking for something and I don't know what's up with that. At Dallas, uh, no, at Reagan National Airport, Washington, D.C., and we're just stopping to use the restroom. And the upstairs, I haven't been to this airport in many years. The upstairs is really pretty. It reminded us of both New Orleans and John Wayne. But now we're downstairs at almost a baggage claim. We've got to pick up our suitcases, and then we have to figure out how to get a shuttle. To our hotel. It was a very boring flight. None of us could find anything we wanted to watch for movie. Megan and I both started movies and then got sick of them and stopped. I read my book for a while and Ben and I both slept some and Megan drew on her iPad and listened to music. But it was just kind of a boring, uneventful flight. All right, we easily got our bags off the uh, baggage carousel. I called the hotel, they told, told them what door we were at. There's an orange sign here. Oh, I can see the train up there. And the, it should come and pick us up right here. And he told me what it looked like. And said it's already on its way. We're just gonna get the shuttle now and go to our hotel and that'll be the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions about traveling to from Minneapolis to DC or anything like that, let me know in the comments below. Have a great day, safe travels.